Hi everyone, what is up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ella and today I'm going to be filming a video all about the effects of social media. Now, if you've never watched one of my Let's Get Real episodes before, I always guide these episodes by answering your questions and dilemmas. If you'd like to take part in next week's Let's Get Real episode, then don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My handle is at LME Horton. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first question or assumption, I guess, that I've been sent through is social media makes us want an unrealistic life and it pressures us to follow crazy standards. Especially platforms like Instagram and TikTok, um, I think that they are really, really superficial. Everything you see is at surface level. You never really get to dig deeper into who that person is all you see is like pictures and pretty pictures like that i don't necessarily think this is a bad thing i think instagram is a very pretty place but then also weirdly that is what we love it for we go on instagram for the aesthetic and to see pretty things pretty lives i think if you can simultaneously hold the idea that instagram can be a very pretty beautiful idealistic place and also simultaneously hold the idea in your head that actually that is not how everyone lives basically what i'm trying to say there's no point trying to live like the people you see on instagram like not everyone is living this super glamorous lifestyle a lot of it is just for show which i think as long as you know that it's not a problem so the next question i received was how to stop comparing yourself to models or influencers i think the influencing world is a really interesting one like why is it that we are so easily influenced by a single person the main person who comes to mind when i think about this is molly may she is like i mean molly may is like the ultimate influencer you know what i mean like if she sells anything most people are likely to invest into it it's not just because she's got a pretty face do you know what i'm saying like there's more to it than just being pretty i've actually realized that influencing is all about portraying an idyllic life it is about making everyone think that you have a perfect life and encouraging people to aspire towards that. What I mean by this is like, if you ever look at Molly May's Instagram, I'm not coming from Molly May by the way, I absolutely love her. But if you look at her Instagram, all of her pictures are so perfect and like her room's super tidy all the time. And you know, all of her pictures on her grid look really perfect. If you watch her YouTube vlogs though, you will see that a lot of work has gone into making that picture look nice. And that's the same for me. Like any Instagram picture I take, I will shove all of the mess to the side of the room that you can't see and take the picture in the bit of the room that looks tidy because why would I want to show you my messy room? If you think about that and apply that to the rest of life, why is anyone going to show you the bad bits of their life when they could sort of push them to the side and just show you snippets of the good bits. I just want to clarify at this point, yes, obviously I kind of work as an influencer, so I am part of this culture that I'm talking about. I actually really like to think that the person I portray to you guys is very much still me. I'm very, very honest on camera. I tell you all about my personal experiences, about my downfalls, about my flaws. I, I shared my first ever heartbreak on YouTube where I got broken up with. I shared pictures of myself when I put on three stone in six months. Like, I talked about my deepest insecurities and my mental health. And I like to think that because of all of that, you guys know that the person you are seeing is very much me like i'm not pretending to be someone i'm not on these videos at all and that is what i think is important i think that is the important distinguishing thing yes it's good to share the good times but make sure that you share some of the bad and ugly too because obviously nobody is perfect and i think i would never want my viewers to think that that is my life because it isn't. If not, we're gonna end up with a world where everybody feels like they need to be super positive all the time when that is not necessarily the case. Next question, what is your opinion on TikTok? Do you think it is a toxic platform? Now, when I first started posting and using TikTok, I was like, oh my God, this is such a fun platform. Like it's so different from any other platform that I have ever used in that it's very, very trend based. It's very quick, spontaneous. It's not as planned as YouTube videos. It's not as planned as even Instagram content. It is very much in the moment, fun, snappy content. And that's what I like it for. But ever since lockdown started, I've actually noticed a bit of a trend with um, TikTok and specifically those who are viral on TikTok. The example I'm going to use is I was talking to my friend the other day about Addison Rae and I was saying like, oh, like I love her TikTok. She's so funny. Um, I think she's really pretty, la la la. 
And then my friend was kind of like, yeah, I know, it's a shame that she gets so much hate. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, go look at the comment sections on a few of her TikToks. So I just clicked on a random one and they were all commenting about her weight. And it's just, it's just the most ridiculous thing. Cause if you, cause A, if you've ever seen Amazon Ray, I mean, it's just the most ridiculous thing to even say anyway, because she's tiny. And even if she was a bigger girl, I've never in my life seen such a volatile platform where everybody just is so brutal, like so brutal in the comment section. I also think there's a very specific kind of culture on TikTok. There's such a wide scope of content that's on TikTok. It's difficult for me to sort of sit here and criticize one section because it's all, there's a lot, there's a lot on TikTok. I do think that the climate where girls are just shamed left, right and center is crazy and it makes me really sad. Like I said before, I do think you need to take everything you see on social media with a pinch of salt. Like the people you see on social media living these lives, living their best lives isn't necessarily a representation of how they actually live. So next up is more of a dilemma and it is I worry because I don't feel like a real woman. I worry guys won't be interested in me because I don't have any curves. That makes me so unbelievably sad. I completely understand like why you would say that because you know social media is filled with body ideals you know the idea that you need to have a big bum small waist a thigh gap hip dips big boobs but not too big or small boobs but not too small tan skin hair extensions eyelash extensions lip filler i mean the list just goes on about body ideal it's absolutely crazy the thing i'd say is that you are you and you should never ever compare yourself to other girls who have different body types to you because and it sounds really really cliche but you are perfect just the way you are and you do not need to compare yourself to other people just because you don't look like what the majority of models and influencers look like on instagram that does not mean that you are less attractive or less of a woman i mean let me tell you another thing if you are going after the right kind of guys and they really will not care about curves and not everything is about boobs and bum i mean i know like contrary to popular culture and like everything we see you think oh you have to have one or the other like you know your boobs or a bum man whatever i actually just completely disagree with that i think it really every single person's preferences are different and and the idea that you have to be conventionally attractive to feel like a woman makes me feel really sad you are you and do not change for anybody do not feel like you have to pretend to be someone you're not you are perfect just the way that you are so next up i've got a question asking me to name some positive influences which i would be very happy to do first off you've got marlin anderson she was on season two of love island in 2015 and she always posts about body confidence and i love her for that she's very very honest she's one of the few people that i follow that is deadly deadly honest about grief and about you know issues with body confidence and body ideals she is literally the person to follow if you struggle with that so i highly recommend her another positive influencer that i follow is called molly campsey she is a plus size model she's funny she is really stylish like i'm not being funny like she's got elite sense of style she is really honest and candid about the plus size model industry and I just love how she is changing perceptions on specifically she talks a lot about like sizes of clothes so you know she is very open about her clothes size which is obviously a bit of a taboo among most women like even even I am like scared to talk about my dress size on here even I'm scared to talk about my dress size and I don't know why it's really silly when you think about it because whatever they're just clothes a piece of material that you know fit around our body but there's so much stigma attached to clothes sizes and i just love that she's so open about it also ashley jenner i'm actually friends with ashley she is a lovely lovely girl and really really positive i highly recommend subscribing to her youtube channel and another positive influencer i would say would be charlotte goff she is a small youtuber but she posts a lot about mental health and she's very open and very honest which again i think is really really important in today's day and age and finally l darby i know l darby is not new news she is a very big youtuber here on the platform but i have to say that 
I think she's very open and honest about her personal experiences, particularly to do with her mum um, and grief and loss. I also just think she's a really lovely, positive person to subscribe to. She's got a really upbeat, bubbly personality and I would say they would be my top five positive influencers. Okay, that just about rounds up my Let's Get Real episode all about social media. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you would like a notification every time time I upload a new video. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram then my handle is at Ella May Horton. Follow me on there for all the most up-to-date information on what is going on in my life and follow me on TikTok. My handle is at Ella May Horton and the last O is a zero. Comment down below the topic that you'd like me to discuss next week and I will see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>